okay fine so i hope screen is visible right okay so the very first topic in the python comes with the tokens okay now what are these things i am doing the three hashtags and all will let you know so the very first thing is the tokens and python right so what are tokens if we define these things we say this has uh, the very smallest unit of a program when we write any programs we can say these tokens are the smallest unit of the program okay like in the body we say the smallest part of the body cell right similar to that we say the smallest individual part of any program is called as a token or sometimes it is also named as a lexical unit you know like uh, let's say lexical unit sometimes okay so in python we have some different kind of tokens like let's write it so we have five tokens in python but the first one is keywords we'll go on with every of the tokens next is the identifiers third is the literals the operators the punctuations can anyone define what are these things any of like keywords identifiers literals operators and punctuators okay fine let's write a sample program and we'll define the various all the five uh, tokens or lexical units from that okay so just writing a program simple program This is a program. All right. For a in range, I'll let you know what are these things. For the, this is right. For now, this is not of like you don't have to go with this program right now. Okay, don't understand what's going there. Just see. Okay, let me write the line numbers. Yeah. So for a in range of one to ten, if a is divided by two and leaves the remainder as zero, print the a. That's it. Right. We run this. We get the output as two, four, six, and eight. That's it. Done. for so now uh, we have to understand in all these three lines what are keywords what are identifiers what are literals what are operators and what are the punctuators uh, that is an easy one to understand those things okay right now we'll go with the each of the keywords and then we'll understand what are the keywords here right so the very first question comes what are keywords Can I? Yeah, sure. One second, I think my son is not full. Yeah, that is okay. Yeah, speak. Uh, so keyword means that that is preserve word by the language uh, or if you write the language. That means uh, if you write a for, a for is also keyword. Uh, uh, we cannot use a keyword as a variable or something. Yeah. Keyword has a predefined meaning. Yeah. So these keywords are nothing but some kind of special names or the reserved names that are already present in Python or in like in any programming language when you talk about the keywords. And these are the predefined words with special meanings to interpreter or the compilers or to the functionalities, right? Okay. So let's write it. so we can say keywords sorry yeah
So these are predefined words, basically to understand. So if we want to see how many keywords are there for any programming language, like when we talk about the Python, if we say how many keywords are there in the Python, anyone can tell? Excuse me, sir. Yeah. So many keywords like auto, default, float, register, no, if, else, care, unlimited, we can say. Ah, uh, uh, no. Mm, not, not exactly. Yeah. What What you are saying? Thirty two. Fifty two. Thirty five. Thirty five. Yeah. Correct. Who said thirty five? Swaraj. Who said thirty five? Let me see. Uh, who said thirty five? Swaraj or who said? Uh, Swaraj. Okay. Yeah. That is correct. Uh, who said 52? I said 32, sir. 32? Mm. Okay, uh, alright, so you missed three. No, no issues. C. Uh, I said 32 are in C++. <laughs> yeah? 32 keywords are in a C++. Oh, C++ yeah. Line. Yeah, so you, you might be saying for that. So, but someone said... <laughs> Some girls say there are unlimited. Who, who was that? It's not an issue, yeah? Whatever you know, just speak out, that's it. better, right? To speak out something is better. Then you'll get to learn if you are wrong, right? So 35 are the keywords in the Python. Now, how, how we print those things? If you want to see uh, all the keywords, how we are going to print that? So there are two different methods. First one is, you have to import that keyword like import keyword you have to bring that first of all and then if you want to get all the list of the keywords you can just write keyword dot so from the keyword module you have to bring the kw list keyword dot kw list when you run this you get all the list of the keywords and that is there so only these are the keywords and the python okay right but in a you can say in a tabular form if you want to see up the things you can just write help of keywords and there you see a list of the python keywords and if you write the help of any other keyword like false class continue you will get more details of that particular keyword okay right all right so there are 35 if you see there are nine rows and here you can see so these are the nine rows and one two three four columns so nine four thirty six minus one okay, one is missing here right so 35 easy to count up okay and one more thing uh, in python whenever you see a bold green color like when you work in jupiter i'm saying bold green color will give you a keyword so you can see light green not bold basically not light uh, and unbold and this is an bold one so these are the keywords yeah, these are the keywords okay these are not the keywords these are the functions okay all right let's move further so these are the keywords right now you cannot make a variable with this keyword name that will be uh, that will take you as a problem basically afterwards right you will get a problem critic situations now uh, let's say that uh, for any of the keyword you want to understand or like to go through with that keyword in detail you can just write help of that keyword like uh, i can write this as to sorry to go more in the detail for the particular keyword yeah you can use the function help how for example help of the uh, 
let's say continue okay so you can use this like this okay i'm not writing there you can use it there you'll get even the links and all okay now if you want to check whether a word is a keyword or not how can we you sure that this is not a keyword so like now you know that these are the keywords but if i say that there is a word for there is a word is there is a word uh, undo there is a word cut so from all these what are the keywords for means basically right now if you want to check this undo and cut is a keyword or not how will you check there are certain functions for that how so you are going to write print whether even if you don't write print you will get the results right that is not a composite part but if you write it's okay so print or otherwise let's remove this right so we want to see whether uh, this undo and cut is a keyword or not that's it right so we can just write undo is keyword oh one second What the thing there as a keyword help of this is this so yeah keyword description is there yeah key double list contains uh, is keyword okay all keywords one second keyword dot k double list keyword dot is keyword that's all uh, return to information okay, fine so that's what we were searching for if we write up undo is a keyword or not so attribute is not given up there see ya oh 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 okay 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 that's it keyword is keyword and then you can write up things over here so if it is a keyword you will be getting up results yes or not sorry not yes it's true like if we say keyword uh, for continue right continue is a keyword so we can just write is keyword for continue now continue is a keyword so obviously we are, when we run this we will be getting the result as true that is this continue is a keyword so when you uh, when you are not sure that it is a keyword or not we, you can use this method that is is keyword right to get the things there okay so this is basically the keywords use right all the bold green letters whatever you will see there in the python are basically the keywords moving further next next is your identifiers if you see up the tokens list next comes the identifier so here you have got identified what are the keywords for n and f next going to the identifiers now the next question comes what are identifiers sir identifiers can be defined as a sequence of alphanumeric characters You say the sequence of alphanumeric characters. Okay, anything more? First character should uh, need to be an alphabet, right? And first letter needs to be an alphabet. Okay, yeah, uh, that is also fine. Uh, so, identifiers means name of the variable or. Uh -huh. Class name or function name, mm -hmm. and we cannot use a, a number first for identifier. That means one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. A, B, C isn't the keyword. Sorry, isn't the name. Uh, a, B, C, one, two, three is a name, and uh, uh, underscore is a valid in the identifier. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. So uh, we can say identifiers are the names that are given to the different part of the code or your program. 
like it can be a name of a variable it can be a name of a object it can be a name of a function a list a dictionary and so forth various things right like so we can define this right identifiers can be the uh, not sorry not can identifiers are the names assigned in missing you can take assigned or given whatever you want okay so these are assigned to the different part of the code or the program you say it as like okay and for you can say you now it can be mm -hmm. a variable name a function name a object name okay um so forth like that so for example if we say in the above example what can we define as an identifier if we just go just here we see this for a in range of this and a uh, in all the lines we can see this a and this a is nothing but the variable and we can say now that this okay that a is a identifier right that is an identifier easy one. you will understand what is a variable and all these things right for those who are very much new if okay, someone is coming kamini is asking uh, sir anaconda is necessary to download if i have python Uh, no, if if you want to work with your ideally, then it's okay. Okay, fine. Next, so identifies. I hope is clear to everyone. Like if I say for mm, don't go for like S T R I N G in substring. Okay. So these are basically, or if I say, let's make it there and x. So x in substring. Running this gets the true result here. What we can say, x is the variable having a value, or uh, uh, we can say a string stored in that. I will go on further with that thing. So okay, so I. I hope I didn't make it clear, right? Next is literals. What are these literals? <coughs> Sorry. So literals are the strings which are fixed values. Literals are. Strings are also known as constants, which are fixed values. Fixed values. Data items which have a constant or a fixed values, right? Numbers. Uh, strings, integers, and quotes also. Strings. Okay. Yeah, list of numbers. Yeah, string, string literals, numeric literals, But, boolean literals. You, yeah. Special literals like none, tuples, and all. Okay. So these are the data items. Oh, where it is? Where you know? What are can say which are constant or have a fixed value okay and they can be string literals for example in the string you can say anything under quotes but what comes anything in a quotes like a c a t cat or you can say numeric literals Twenty-three point five, like that. You can say boolean. We'll discuss what are boolean things. There are operators for that. And for booleans, we say at true or false. 
or sometimes one or zero. Okay. And we can have some special kind of bilaterals like none or the tuples. Okay. So these can be the factors you know, regarding things. Next coming up to the fourth one that is operators. So literals you can see here in this program what are literals having fixed values what can be the literals 2 0 1 10 all these things which have fixed value all right next comes the operators and the punctuators quick let's complete this operators and the punctuators so what are operators so is a symbol operators are symbols sir it can perform particular operations Operators are symbols which can perform functions. Particular operation. operations. Yeah, functions. Okay, okay. Uh, right. It is specified operators. Specified operators are there. All right, yeah. So operators are these tokens that can trigger some computation actions when applied to any kind of variables and all. So we can do that, right? So we can define this operators. Are the tokens you can say that can do some computation or the perfect keyword would be that trigger would be better. So uh, one by one, one everyone will say one operator name if you know, right? Only one operator. Automatic operator. Okay, first is done. Next. Logical operator. Okay, no one will say only one. Arithmetic is there. Next one, anyone? If anyone knows? So assignment operators. Assignment operators. Cool. Con Next. Conditional operator. Conditional. One second, slowly, slowly, let me write conditional after that. Bitwise operator. Bitwise and what you say it's for us? A logical operator. Logical. Logical operator. Hmm. Identify operator. Identity operator. Identity operators. Relations. Relation, I think, is done. Conditional and all. Membership operators. Membership operators. Comparison is done. Arithmetic is done. Assignment is done. Conditionals. Uh, yeah. Boolean. Yeah. Boolean. Boolean. Yeah. Logical we have done, identity we have done. So yeah, that's okay. So logical lo in logical we get and or and not booleans. And booleans we say it as comparison one, relational one, conditional, conditions like F, else and all. Right, these are the keywords basically. So if you if you say this as booleans, you can also say it boolean, but that's like names are there, various names are there. Relational can be a name. Right, we also call it as relational operators, shift operators, bitwise has been done. So various names are there. All these are operators basically, right? And arithmetic we say plus minus multiplication device and all we'll go through shift. all these. Shift if you want. Okay. So uh, all the names, let's shift right shift operator. Many times we say shift operators, sometimes we get to that also. Sir so shift operator includes in a Bitwise operator. Yeah, bitwise operator includes in the bitwise operator. But there are various yeah. kind. Sometimes we call is that different. So like, let okay, fine, that's it. So operators, these are right. Okay. Now what are punctuators? The last topic for the tokens, and then we'll come to the comments. Yeah. What are 
punch meters. Hmm. So these are basically the symbols that are used in the programming language to organize a sentence or a structure or uh, we can say a code, right? So most of the punctuators, many a times we use some symbols like uh, square brackets, curly braces, close brackets, slash, at the rate, dot, colon, semicolon, uh, hashtag, single code, double code. These are the symbols basically, right? And these are called as punctuators, okay? So we just define this as this punctuators are the symbols that are used in the programming language. That's it. Okay. And you can say for what to organize sentence or code. That's it. And for example, we can say it as, for example, it can be a double quote, single quote, hashtag, semicolon, I'm not using commas, just using spaces. So these all can be a punctuators. We can define equals to and a lot of things are there, right? You know, like symbols we use. Okay. So these are all the five tokens of Python language. All the five things. I hope every five tokens are clear to you, keywords and all. And you can find everything here. Symbols you can see, operators you can see, right? Here where we can see the symbols. What are the symbols here? these brackets, the colons, the commas and all. Operators, this is an operator, this is an operator, this is a variable, this is a keyword, this is a variable. Or you say it as a literals, right? Okay. Next. Next topic is comments. In Python we have comments. Now what are those things? Comments in Python. What do we say? So uh, till now you might have seen that I'm writing something with hashtags and all, but we can't see anywhere hashtags. What are those things? A bold letters word, right? So basically, what I'm doing, if you note or if you like, see up here is a markdown, and there are code markdown, and we convert a heading. Okay. So if I make it as a code, that will be a comment. You see, a green code kind of like not even the deep not even the unbold and the bold it's a very light color green okay and that is basically uh, a comment right so we can say comments are used just to describe a block of code like uh, let's assume that we, we are creating a good program okay uh, which has got like 30 to 40 pages right like this we are going through 30 to 40 or let's say if this is input number one so we are making a program which is having um, around 900 inputs, 8,000 inputs and like small programs and all, okay. So uh, there, it is not possible every time to just um, remember every line what you have written for why we have written, right. For that, what we do, we make notes, right. We make notes of a very small uh, one particular line or anything, whatever we here even we go in a conference and all what we make we make small notes for that so that small notes you can say that is basically describe one thing right that can be used to describe something and that description is called as comments okay so when you make programs you make uh, some kind of comments so that it will be easier for you to understand why you have used that okay so these are the things basically so comments we can say as uh, let me make two underscore. So these are the basic shortcuts. You should see what I'm doing, right? 
double underscore of comments and now see this is in a markdown this is not a code okay so when i'm writing a code uh, till now i have only written some of the codes and these are in the code okay when i'm not writing a code if i'm making notes i'm making in the markdown area but when i have to write comments it is not written in markdown area you can just write in the code area itself you can say these are used describe the you understand what is a block of code i think you might be a lines a program for any program we say it as a block of code so there are two kind of comments in python The very first one is called as single line. And the second one is called as multi line. Okay. Now, what are these things? Multi line and single line. Okay. In single line, we say that if you have made a program and in the whole program you have used one comment in one line like there are comment which cannot be fitted in one line like if you see of the things here the descriptions and all many times you will see in some two lines uh, yeah here you can see so the total line is not being written in the two lines right so for that we need at least two lines so if same if we are writing a comment and that is of two lines we can say the multi lines if it is for one line we can say it is one line okay that is a very simple definition there is no such requirement for writing up those things right so if i say that uh, for i n word let's say python print i so we have got all the individual letters p y t h o n right now what exactly this program does if someone other if someone a non programmer is looking to this program how will he able to understand that what exactly this is doing so you can write some notes for that non programmer guy right that does you can write something before the program or some line before or after the program like you can write this program will uh, print the individual letters of the word written in single quotes and that's it done and that is a single line comment okay in one line comment is being completed i hope you might be seeing my strings screen sorry okay fine and next comes the multi line strings right now what are multi line strings uh, if i say that this is oh uh, not a, like this this is a multi line string so you can see that this is a multi line string means more than one line is called as multi line so you can write any string above the code below the code beside the code that's it okay all right so that can be defined as a comments and all and comments are something many times you would also get a definition like comments are those things which never get executed executed means that if i say print hello okay and if i say in the very next line uh, let's copy this let's wait now if i'm printing this i get two hello right but now if i say and hashtag that means and uh, any 
line which starts with the hashtag there inside the code is going to be defined as a comment. So if I say in hashtag print hello, I'll only get one hello and the second line will not be executed because the second line is a comment. So you will never get an output of a comment, never. Okay, these are the some important things you should keep in mind. So now uh, let's go to the variables, discuss what are variables and all, and then we'll go directly to the operators to understand what are the operators, how we deal up with those things. Okay. So what are variables? Okay, uh, this comments are clear to everyone? Yes. Cool. Variables. Pipe checking, no. Okay, so uh, two topics, variables and numbers in Python. Okay, now what are variables? When we talk about variables, what exactly are they? Um, so the identifier whose values are not fixed during the program execution is known as variable. Hmm. Correct, bit complex. Any simple definition? Location name, sir. Location? Name. Location name you define it as? Uh, sir, cover variables are a container to store a value. Mm -hmm. Getting more it's store a data. Store data, store values. <coughs> Variable is store, storing data values. Storing data values. Yeah, okay, fine. So basically, variables re represent the reserved storage locations, and these are made to store some values. That's it, basically. Yeah, so all of them are correct, right? Okay, so we define variables as the representatives of the reserved storages or you can say the storage locations and these are made to Now let's have example for this. Like if we say a equals what's today really is nine. A equals nine. B equals uh, nine. Right. Like that. C equals nine point zero. Okay. So numbers in different things, if we say 9, it's 9, right? So uh, 27 by 3, all these things, these are basically the variables. Now if we say print A, B, C, we get the results of that, 9, 9, 9.0, right? So basically, the variables represent or store some values what you basically need to print if you go to print out there okay and all these things now coming to the number in python that's the second topic we are going to discuss numbers in python now uh, numbers is like you can say the first data type in the python that is numeric data type when we discuss about those things okay but there are various data types we'll go on see uh, when we talk about data data what are data anyone can say what are what is a data Sir, please share the screen, sir. It's yes, not sir. Okay, I sir, think. Sir, please share. One second, one second. Actually, someone started presenting, I think, so that it stopped. All right, one second. It's okay now? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, um, okay. Someone might started presenting, so that's Okay, so... Uh, Share the screen. Yeah. So, in the very first numeric data type, we get some 
four kind of numbers, right? So my first question is, what is a data? When we say data types, what is a data? Anything, what you see, number, letters, in your surroundings. So for us, what is a data? Everything we see with our eyes are data, right? Everything. For the computers, everything what computer can understand is a data, right? So uh, we have different data types. When we talk about programming languages, there are numbers, there are really, uh, there are letters, or there are various things, right? So various things has got various types. When we talk about, uh, if you say an image file, there are different data types of that too, like uh, image file for uh, image file. What we can have JPG file, different formats, basically. PNG and all, right? For, similarly, for the video, we can have various formats: AVI, MP4, MKV, MPEG, might be, and various more, right? So there, there are various types of data, and for that, is called as a data type, right? So in Python, similarly, we have different data types, okay? The very first type is the numeric data type, what we are dealing now. Okay, numeric data. Numbers in the Python, what I am talking here. Let's uh, remove this from here. It's x and variables. So, let's go with this. So, let's just write numeric data type. So, this comes with four of the things four various types, it consists of four various types. Now what are those things? Let's say. So it contains four or you can say numbers. Basically what consists in the numeric, the name itself gives that it consists numbers of various types. Okay. Now what are those numbers? What are those types? The very first is an integer. Yeah, what is an integer? Integer is, you can say positive, negative, whole numbers. Right? We can just define are the positive and negative whole numbers, integers. Example, minus 3, 4, 9, 0, 4, 5, all these things can be an integer. Similarly, the next comes float. Now, what is a float? Next type is a float. We can say this as the floats as the real numbers. Right? So which have decimal points. Yeah, decimal values, obviously. When we talk about real numbers, everything comes there. Divisions and fractions and all. Fraction values and all those things. We say it there as the float. Okay. So we say these are the real numbers. Okay. Till now, these are the real numbers. So this can be minus 9.0, oh sorry, 9.0, this can be 4 by 5, 3.5, 2.1, 0.5, sorry, 0.5, all these can be a float, fractional, even you can see the second one is a fraction, it can be a float, okay, fine. Next come the complex, yeah, so what is a complex number? You might have read in class 11 for the mathematics those who have taken it. Real and imaginary. Combination of a real and imaginary complex. Okay. Now, uh, these are the combination of a real and imaginary number. Okay, fine. So, for the example, you can say 3J. So, all, always these are in the form of real 
a plus b j okay like we can say here as uh, 3j 5 plus 2j minus 5 minus 45j and like that 45 plus 0j or 1j like that you can have various complex numbers as you can see up there right now uh, till the float we were clear till the integer and float we were clear that okay that numbers belong to the integer part positive negative whole numbers and let me focus on these things positive negative whole numbers okay real numbers the real and imaginary number in the form of a plus bj okay now now if we say for the complex examples if you see 5 plus 2j minus 5 minus 45j 45 plus 1j what are the real part and what are the imaginary parts there Yeah, like for the second number, 5 plus 2j, what is the real part, real number there? Yes, sir. Yeah? 5 is. 5, okay. So obviously the imaginary would be 2. But if the computer has to be understand that this is a real number, or if the com I, I want the answer from the computer, that print the real part and print the imaginary part. Then what should be the code for that? Okay, fine. No issues. So for getting the real part and the imaginary part of a complex number, we are going to use two functions. Okay, that is real and imaginary. So if we write print or don't write, I, I, I don't have an uh, uses the writing print. So if this is 5 plus 2j, let's assign this a variable. Let's say this is x, which is having 5 plus 2j. And now if we say x dot real part, we'll print the real part of this x and x dot imaginary part. We'll print you the imaginary part of the x in float. So this will print the numbers in float. Okay, that is the uh, we can say that is the process of right, printing up the imaginary and the real part of any uh, complex number. Okay. Now these three has got the size. You know, like every of the. Uh, numbers or the things consist of size consist of various sizes and all they, they have size of their own okay for that we are going to explore one module that is called assess system basically so we need to uh, understand what is the size of a uh, integer any integer what is the size of an integer uh, we get the integer size in the bytes so let's say if we say says dot get size of an integer 32 it's like 28 bytes so we will print size of an integer is this copy this copy so you get size of an integer is 28 next so let's write everything there itself so what is 32 
42 is uh, I'm just taking a random number like you can take 1 2 3 4 anything okay so I'm okay. just taking a number that is an integer right 32 is an integer you can take 100 you can take 1000 you can take 3 2 1 2 any, any number okay okay so what is the size of that 28 28 till still you can see even if the integer is very big the size is 28 because the size of an integer is always a 28 now uh, sometimes what happens the uh, student thinks like this is 32 this is a number right this is 134352 this is a number right but the size should be larger for this why the size should be larger this is just a number right this is not I, I'm not saying that if the size of one uh, apple is uh, you can say if the size of one box let's say what to go for that uh, one box is let's say four meter square or like okay so if I'm writing uh, one two box then obviously it's going to be eight meter square right so I'm not just using something here like that this is just a number okay so that is 28 bytes having okay now for float what happens what is the size of a float so uh, string size do change so for the float let's make it 5 anything for a complex complex we'll see what comes 7j so 28 24 and 32 all three whatever we have seen till now uh, we are just printing other things and getting the results accordingly and we see it as 28 24 and 32 that's fine so let's see even more like says dot get size of so what is the size of 3j still 32 okay so complex float and integer are always in these bytes 24 28 32 hope that is clear okay now uh, today in today's assignment you will get questions like to get the uh, you know like uh, which python version you are using okay so how can you get that so you can get that uh, like by printing sys dot underscore underscore version Oh, uh, what is that? One second. I think that's a sys dot version. Yeah. So that's it. Version will go with that packages and all. So 3.7.6 is my one, what I'm using. And it's being like when you install and all those things. For more information, you can get sys dot uh, version. And I think info would give you much better huh? so for more help you can just write or you can just go for the directory of sys so all these are the functions what they are on the sys like if you want to execute or if you want to learn more in that case you can go so you use print function to get the results better and these are your functions all these things so all these functions you can use we have used one function that is get size of you can even also use uh, get size of from where where it is mm, where it is get size of get size of get get yeah here so it is something get size of and you will get the things right so there is similarly various functions I, I always will give you and also we have used version we have used version info okay similarly uh, something more important here let me see mm. open flags and no enter info no enter info no fine okay so these are like the functions okay so you can explore like if you want to understand what is the version says you so sysop help of sys.version what is that exactly so you will get a proper documentation of that particular function who is that doing okay 
so you get everything there as it is right so all the things you get what is version and meanwhile of a string also you will get the things there always this this comes always as a string uh, is that giving a string values and all uh, help on str sys version equals to class of a string object oh okay okay sys dot version without string would give you no python documentation for this is this help utility of that okay all right i'll give you a link of how to get the things there done okay so these are the things you can use uh, says so the next number is uh, random we'll go with the random i hope by tomorrow okay so the important functions i think is being clear with you with all the uh, session all right now uh, let's go in more detail okay so till here the numbers are clear uh, sorry the uh, things are clear having any doubts no yes no no sir cool right now see the printing has got different options various options how let's say if i say my x is equals to 5 y is equals to 6 i need to print this all okay i need to print this so what are the possible ways i can write for printing so i can write just print 5 and 6 even to get the things 5 6 like this i can write print my x and y still i get the same results uh, okay let me do one thing just cut this and let me write it here as and i get none will come right okay one second Mm, x and y 5 6 5 6 yeah sure our next option could be uh, cos and d and cos and d and we can give percent as x and y maybe yeah 5 6 5 6 5 6 our next method could be this and this and using a format option of x and y hmm, still got the results so uh, you have seen right i can directly write the numbers i can write the variables i can write percent d percent d basically this d defines that this is an integer and format then, specifier uh, yes sorry format specifier percent d percent d format specifier yeah specifier. formats uh, writing the formats and then here the string format here mission or will uh, Learn this ad in the string one. Okay, so there can be various ways of printing anything, right? Now let's say that if you are printing a line, let's say if this is the first line. If I have a second line, uh, this is not necessary that I have to print it like print here, writing the second again, writing all these to print get the same things like that. Right? What we can do just instead of writing this, we can just write first line giving a slash n which gives the second line and you can go with this right uh, okay remove this slash stuff here so this is first line and then the second line so using slash n you can go with the first and the second line uh, with that respectively okay if you are using slash n in the next line so it gives you a new line with a gap if you are like uh, using with at a gap like that okay Next is the input function. When we talk about the input, there are various facts. Input function. Now, in input function, we have different formats. Like if you, if you want to take, so by default, remember always the input you take is in a string. Like if you say input, enter your name. So we'll just run and let's say I'm writing my name. Oh, okay. So that's it there it is okay so we haven't stored it there so it is also printing the name right if you want to store you can print it there now next is like when we say so see in input if we say enter a number and let's say if now i'm storing it as a i i need to calculate a percentage by 360 okay so 
let's run this and let's say if I have got 350 okay so I need to calculate a percentage how can I calculate a divided by 360 multiplied by 100 and so this is an unsupported operand type why because this is a string and an integer so what basically what I said that what you take input is a string right so if I say that this is a string what is a that is a string see 350 under quotes so whenever you see anything under quotes that is a string right so a multiplied by 5 if I say what I get the results see 350350 that is nothing but a has been printed for 5 times okay so that is not the result what I am expecting because if I say 350 multiplied by 5 that is something different 1750 is the result actual right so there what I am getting is a called as string replication we will understand it when we learn string okay so for now I just want to say that when you want to take uh, numeric data as the input you have to specify there like if you want to take an integer you specify b is equals to integer input okay so input of an integer and then you can write enter a number you see 350 now let's say b divided by 360 multiplied by 100 to get the results and it's 97.22 percent right and similarly there are various functions like when you see uh, uh, you know like uh, what is that called as round off yeah so when you uh, see this is a lot lot of numbers you want to round off something here we use uh, let's say this is c percentage for p let's say okay so this has got p and that's the result right so if i want to round off this so i'll say round my p by two decimal points so that is 97.22 and that is function okay round off you understand decimal rounding off you might be doing from class 7 right okay so these are the basic things so see now it is possible if i take input in the integer even if i take uh, this same thing in the float oh sorry uh, except, yeah, copy. so even if i take this as a float this can also be done like if i take percentage as the input then you will have to take that and float because if a student has got 97.8 percent and if you write if you take it an input uh, as an integer that will be converted by only 97 we'll learn tomorrow that is what is type casting and all okay so for today uh, you only have to go through all these things what we have discussed okay all these things to have practice up like a bit scale up more with all these okay all these things yeah and next is float input and all uh, let's run this so here we write 300 Point five, so there we get b as 300.5 but the same thing if we write an, in an integer 300.5 get an output value error because we have to write input integer we are taking a float and that's a wrong thing okay that's a wrong one so if you write float here that will execute so in float if you write an integer it will work no problem but in, in an integer if you write a float that will not work okay you see your b is 300.0 because float will make everything in zero as it is okay we'll discuss all these things in very much detail right so integer is done float is done uh, the string is done right next comes the complex so what is the keyword for taking complex number eval right so c is done is this c c no so c for eval evaluation and we say input one second yeah fine so enter a number complex number let's run this so 23 plus uh, 45j done if i say c dot real part and c dot imaginary part 23 and 45 that's it okay so if you think that you can take it in an input just like uh, taking it like this and 23 plus 45 j running like this obviously you'll get an error okay so these are the things i hope that is clear and now next that how do we understand that these are the 
the integer these are the floats these are the complex and all how we are going to understand these things right for that we need to understand one term called as type casting type casting and type what is a type and what is type casting so this type tells you the data type of that particular variable like if you are writing x y and z and all those things like a b and c and p whatever i have used till now if you see a what is a this is 350 under quotes so what is the type of a this is string okay now what is b 300.0 right so what is the type of b float float what is c complex okay so type of c is complex as it is uh we haven't taken any integer b is an integer okay again we have done that okay d 340 so d and the type of d and you get 340 in okay so string float complex integers done easy all right uh, next comes the, when we talk about type casting type casting is a method where you interchange the type you know like intercast the cast change similarly there we just change the casting here the types here integer to float float to complex and all right so it's easy now in the type casting also we have two different kinds this is important that type casting has two different types now what are those things first one is yeah anyone know Implicit convolution is explicit convolution. Implicit. Explicit. Hmm. Explicit and implicit, right? So implicit, what happens? I'm just writing here itself uh, that an implicit. At uh, we can say just giving it for the user right and implicit what happens automatically or you can just write when type changes auto okay and in explicit when type is forced to be changed or when the type is changed by the user easy one okay so these are the two things basically and let's make it bolder so they easily get to understand okay so let's say that if my abc you have seen right there a b c and d i just print a b c and d so all things are there right now okay so if I want that or a doing a basic calculation, 3 plus 4.5, what is the result? 7.5, right? Yes. So 3 is an integer, next one is a float, 4.5. Integer plus 4 giving you an output of a float. We haven't changed this, we haven't changed the data type, we just added up and got the results and that is the type of a float. And if you say 3 plus 3, 6 plus 3, that is an obviously an integer, right? So when we want to change the things, like we are changing 5 plus 7.8, obviously we know that we are going to get something in float. So if we say integer of this, we will get the integer. We will not get 12.8, we will only get 12. So when we force something to get as the things, we get the explicit type that is there, okay? And then the integers are being they are defined as okay i hope things are clear now uh, there is one function called as len
then function is something like when you uh, uh, basically count up the total number of elements in your variable in your string or in such things okay like let's say if this is called as artificial right i want to count how many elements are there how many letters are there i'll just write len that is length of this artificial that is 10 that's it length you will get the things according if you have a list of numbers so like length of all these i'm picking up okay one two three four five six seven eight what are how many are there so there are something invalid i forgot uh, yeah there are eight okay so like that we proceed with the things all right so today your work is just to check uh, the things as uh, we have learned right as we have done till now and you can see the things like that okay so i'm giving you a very simple two questions easy one so task okay before task let me discuss one more thing that is one operators arithmetic operators okay arithmetic operators so as from the name you can see that arithmetic operators use basically the basic arithmetic calculations plus minus multiplication divisions and all okay all these are used in the arithmetic uh, operators basically so uh, these are just used to get the numeric values to perform some mathematical calculations so uh, there are six type of things addition operator subtraction operator uh, multiplication operator division operator integer operator uh, sorry integer division you can say on or uh, you can say on flow divisions and there is a modulus operator and there is an exponentiation operator so all the basic operators right and we can define this n plus minus multiplication division flow division modulus and exponentiation all these things right so let's see 2 plus 3 2 minus 3 2 divide by 3 sorry and 2 multiplied by 3 the results four common results uh, okay we are getting 5 minus 1 0 0.666 and all and that's all right okay similar results all these are easy next we have the uh, integer division what we can see the three special mode that is this okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 oh there, there is 7 okay so we write 2 so if you see this one 2 divided by 3 giving a result of 0 point all these things so if we convert this float and integer what is the result we are getting guys 0 if we convert this an in an integer 0 0.666 and all what is the result only 0 yes sir, only 0 right so if i say so for that conversion instead of writing int inside the parenthesis we just write this to get the result integer division and 2 to the power of 3 as the results you will be getting and i have missed something 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 yeah so 2 modulus of 3 let's say uh let's say 100 modulus of so what are the results first one will be 0 next one will be 8 and next one will be 1 why when 100 is divided by 3 it leaves the remainder as 1 and 2 to the power of 3 is 8 so i think things are clear having any doubts 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 yeah. okay any doubts so if i say a plus b whole square what is the formula a square plus 2 ap plus b square Okay, let's have the task, your task time. So the first question you have to solve it. Now like uh, today is the first task, so I'm giving you easy questions. Okay, so the first question. Uh, if a is equals to 100 how many if you are how many you are typing the same or just looking on today i have taken a long time from tomorrow it will be just four to five and then we'll have assignments 
so that everyone can solve it. E is equals to uh, a square plus b square plus 2ab. Okay, and q has got p is equals to let's say a percentile of c, and q is equals to okay uh, let's make it changes so you have to get the type of e all right so question is print the values of d p e and get the type of e quick completed quick uh, making yeah so write it there um just, just doing a little bit zoom Next is print 100 percent using Strings. Or one second, let's change the question. Print When A is equal to 100, B is equal to 80, and C is equal to 90. Fast, fast, fast. Last one. These three questions, quick. Sir, so type is port, sir. One second, one second. A strand. What did you say? Type is port. Uh, print of DP is uh, 10 lakhs. Space 33 space 1269.7536. All right, let's see. Uh, run this. Well, that is a, oh, I haven't printed any print. What I say to print you B, B, E, and type of e. something this. Yes, sir. Cool. Next one. How will you do? Quick. Have two minutes more. The print A comma B comma C. Yes, I I was expecting this answer. That is wrong. You get the results one zero zero eight zero nine zero. Having gaps in between, I don't want that gaps. See what I have written one zero zero eight zero nine zero. And don't try. It. Sometimes, sometimes student do. Sir, this is this could be the answer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what your voice is not clear. Concat. Concatenation. Why? Mm -hmm. There are three different variables. Why will you concatenate? Yes. 
वन मिनट मोर देन लास्ट क्वेश्चन ट्राई लास्ट क्वेश्चन टू इट्स इजी आई हैव गिवन द आंसर आल्सो ओके कूल सी कैन यू टेक इट एज अ स्ट्रिंग कैन यू चेंज समथिंग इन द क्वेश्चन कैन यू प्रिंट इट एज टिल नाउ यू आर यू आर सींग राइट फॉर एंटीजा वी टेक आई एन टी फॉर फ्लोट वी टेक फ्लोट फॉर कॉम्प्लेक्स वी टेक कॉम्प्लेक्स फॉर स्ट्रिंग वी टेक एस टी आर सो वाई नॉट टू प्रिंट दिस एज द एस टी आर ऑफ ए comma the str okay i am giving you two options right the str of b so this will print basically the three things uh, c and here also you will not get some sticky results you get the result something like this 100890 but i don't want this right so what you can do is you can write plus in the variables getting a compact values of all or otherwise what you can do you can say uh, like x y and z i'm saying you can say x y z and z and it can be 100 it can be uh, 80 it can be 90 okay like this and then you can just uh, i think first answer was x y and z printing like this uh, in case of comma what you do is just plus adding adding all the variables To get the result. So, second option also you can do when when is the thing that you are just adding up your strings, okay? And the first one is also the uh, good one where you are converting the things in the string and then you are printing up. Okay, last one. Okay, in this case, if I say x is equals to hundred, y is equals to that modulus operator. Like if the values are x and y, and I say x is equals to hundred, and y is equals to modulus, and not in the operator like this, then how we are going to write the hundred percent? No gaps in between again. Okay, see, uh, giving you the results. You can write, print. You don't print x and y. You get the gap, right? And if you say if you write x plus y again, you will get an uh, uh, like an uh, unsupported operand error. That is, an integer and string cannot be added. So you have to make something either in the string or either in the integer. so you cannot make it this as an integer right because that will not work but you can make this as a string so you can say this as str of x plus the y to get the results and that can be done easily and that is the result okay so these are the things all right